quarter of a million victims still waiting for justice as it appears they've been forgotten and pushed to the back of a pile only for criminals at least in theory to walk free well for months we've been trying to get some basic questions answered who what when where and why Houston Police Chief Troy Fenner met with members of the media to talk about the investigation into suspended incident reports Yes, and so our Liliana Pearson is here with us now. And Liliana, really one of the journalists that was invited to this conversation. So Liliana, you were instructed to leave behind your cell phones, no mm -hmm. cameras, any recording devices out there for this really, what we're hoping was a candid conversation. What did you take away from all of this? So this was something, as you mentioned, that's a little unusual for when we meet with uh, public officials like this. No cameras, no audio. And for the most part, you know, themes seemed pretty spot on. They said they wanted this to be an open and honest conversation. I do feel like we got uh, a lot of our answers, but a lot of the answers that we got were really only half. They kept saying that this is an ongoing investigation. Things are fluid. You can see in those pictures there, uh, Chief Finner walking into the room. And this is somebody who is a very, you know, mild mannered person. He is pretty hard to fluster. But in this conversation, yeah. you could start to see some of those cracks when we really started to press him, sighing, shaking his head again, saying that it was hard for him to give us all the answers we wanted because of this ongoing investigation. And I would imagine, um, obviously, this is a very tough situation, mm -hmm. and really the spotlight is on Chief Finner right now yes. as all of this is ongoing. Um, you're mentioning on camera that you're not getting full answers. I mean, what, is, what does this say? They keep saying it's an ongoing investigation. I mean, more or less, when do you think you're finally going to get those answers? So we know that this investigation is hopefully supposed to be wrapping up this month, so hopefully yeah. when that initial investigation comes out, we're going to be getting some of these answers. You know, in that room, we did see not only Chief Finner, but we also saw his executive assistant, Chief Bantine. And he was there to kind of let us know that these half answers were unfortunately going to keep coming, saying that because this investigation is continuing, they don't want to jeopardize anything as they're talking to the different people within HPD to try to figure out what they knew and when. But hopefully a lot of those questions are going to be coming soon. Yeah, and so, of course, you did get some new information from yesterday's meeting regarding the progress that they're making. So let's take a listen to that now. Of the 261,000 suspended incident reports, HPD has reviewed just over 67,000. That means somebody has read the incident report and tried to contact a victim. But HPD didn't answer questions as to how many people they've actually reached, saying the numbers are fluid and they're hoping to hear back from more victims. Chief Finner has said from the start, getting a hold of victims was going to be a challenge. We continue to ask victims who may have changed uh, contact information since filing a report uh, since uh, 2016. Please email us at specialvictimsreport at houstonpolice.org or call 713-308-1180. ABC 13 has talked with several victims, even alerting police to their suspended cases. But after at least eight years have lapsed, numbers have changed, people have moved. One afternoon, I called over 40 numbers on suspended incident reports, and many of those numbers are no longer in service. One victim was 82 years old when she made her report in 2022. What happens if a victim has passed away? HPD has not said to what extent they will go to find victims beyond a call, text, email, and door knock. At least one victim we've talked to admitting it's been so long, they worry they won't remember key details that would be helpful in their case. Yeah, and so Liliana, you went into the meeting with HPD with a mm -hmm. very specific question that you have been asking during this entire investigation. What was it and what did you learn? So I wanted to know if the second part of this code was being applied. So the code in the police handbook, it's pretty short, it's just a couple sentences long. It says that if you are going to be using this code, if you're going to be suspending incident reports because of a lack of personnel, that every once in a while you need to be going back, you need to be reviewing these cases and reassigning them to investigators. So for yeah. two months, I've been asking law enforcement, were they doing the second part of that code? It's easy to put the code on the report. Are you doing the work and reassigning them to investigators? Back on March 13th, the chief said that he couldn't tell me at the time. I asked again yesterday, and he told me at this point he can only assume that at least some of these cases were shelved yeah. and never looked at again. Yeah, and so from the start, uh, we have been told that this code was inve mm -hmm. invented back in 2016, but then we learned during a committee meeting that it 
it was in 2014 when that code was referenced. And some suspended reports, we understand, they seem to go back to the 80s. Yeah. So do we have really a clear picture of when this specific code was truly invented? So I did bring that uh, up to the chief yesterday, asking if he could give some clarity yeah. on this, because that certainly muddied the water with all these different dates floating around. Mm -hmm. And he told me that they, they know that this at least goes back to 2016. And the reason they know that is because their record management system, that went online in 2016. We know that this code is hardwired to it. It cannot be removed. So yeah. as what they're able to tell us at this time is that they know at least it went back to 2016, but still some questions that we have about when exactly it went in. Again, we're hoping to get some more of those final answers once that final report comes out here in the next couple weeks. And I think that's what makes it all the more confusing. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so when and with who and remember uh, with Chief Artis Aveda, we were asking him, mm -hmm. it seems like this happened during um, when you were chief, but then he says, I don't recall this. Really some of these basic questions that we've had yeah. from the beginning, we are still ans uh, asking them right now, and really looking yeah. to get those answers. But well, we appreciate you continuing to press them on this and hopefully, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. maybe we'll get those answers that we truly need here. Hopefully soon. Yeah, thanks Liliana.